What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. The IRS may owe you money. I'll give you the details on that because there's billions of dollars on that. Also, there's massive, massive shipping problems here happening right now on the West Coast as basically the ports are shutting down because of a huge labor dispute, which could, could cause and is cause supply chain problems. Take a listen here. This morning at West Coast ports, where everyday products arrive and are then shipped across the country, there's growing concern dock workers may not show up to work again, creating a potential supply chain slowdown. Over the last four days, some of the nation's busiest ports have sat idle as the International Longshore and Warehouse Union battles the Pacific Maritime Association over a new contract. As negotiations over pay, benefits, safety, and automation have dragged on for a year, the ILWU says some of its 22,000 rank-and-file members have begun to voice their displeasure by not showing up for work at critical ports. The PMA counters the disruptive work actions effectively shut down operations at some marine terminals. The problems brewing here could eventually impact you at home. This is sort of a slow burn that could get to a boil pretty quickly. The National Retail Federation urging the president to intervene because roughly 40 percent of our nation's imported goods arrive here at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Our partners at CNBC report it could take weeks to clear the short backlog already created, saying many of the containers delayed now are back to school and holiday products. Because of these slowdowns or dock workers not showing up, that causes delays, delays in getting those goods into stores, and that costs extra money. And at some point, those extra costs could be passed on to consumers. While today's port problems in no way resemble the massive shipping backlog that threatened the national supply chain during COVID, there is growing concern the problem unfolding here could eventually impact your bottom line. This morning, both the White House and the Department of Labor are closely monitoring this situation. Our friends at CNBC tell us, though, major progress has been made during those contract negotiations. But so far this morning, no deal quite yet. Yeah, House Representative Val Hoyle, a member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, said, quote, the shippers I know of are afraid of what might happen if we shut down our ports. People are concerned. Data from logistics platforms Go Comet shows median delay times trending upwards this week in several key West Coast ports, including Los Angeles, Seattle, Long Beach, California. The wait times at the port of Seattle are now more than a week. And the rates, the cost for shipping containers on the West Coast are rapidly rising which means that the prices are going to rise for the consumers, you and I, because the, the companies that have to pay more costs are going to raise their prices. Quote, container rates for importing 40-foot containers to the United States West Coast over the past week have jumped 20% week over week, likely as a result of the anticipated congestion at the port. This follows a dramatic lull in rates after last year's high. Now, I know what kind of happens because I've sold products on Amazon for years and I talk to a lot of big sellers and I just kind of know how the industry is because I, you know, frequent the forums and I just know how Amazon sellers are. When rates dip a little bit, sellers tend to not lower their prices a little bit because, you know, they tend to have like, you know, certain pricing like you know, $14.99, $9.99, $25.99, etc. And they'll adjust their price upward when shipping costs go up because, you know, they can't be unprofitable. It's just common sense. It's business 101. But if shipping prices go down a little bit, well, then they might make an extra dollar or something like that per unit or something like that, right? But if shipping prices go up, they have to raise their prices because they can't be, you can't sell product for unprofitable. You can't lose money on every single unit, right? And if shipping prices go down, 
well, you can make a little bit more money on each unit. That's great, right? I mean, business is business. You have to make money, right? So that's that's the kind of problem that people don't understand. And when the Trump tariffs went in in place, what that really did is that basically added an extra tax on specific products uh, being imported into the United States. Okay, and really what that meant is that some products ended up costing more money. So what do you think that ended up doing? That meant that if Nike or Amazon or anybody buying products from overseas, not getting them made in the United States, they had to charge more to their customers, ultimately to you, the consumer. The other option was to get it made in the United States, which was typically double the cost or more. So this is just kind of how things work. In case you didn't know, I, I know this because I've had products, you know, I've sold products on Amazon for years and years and years. Uh, I used to teach people how to do it, but I, I don't, I don't do it anymore because I'm just too busy and I've kind of stopped that process for now. Um, but this just kind of gives you an inside access to how this stuff works. Yeah. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, the IRS has $1.5 billion in unclaimed tax refunds. Do you still qualify? Also, I want to mention here, the IRS still has a sizable backlog of returns despite improvements, taxpayer advocates say, and it's probably not going to improve now that the new debt ceiling bill that passed, um, the Republicans basically, Kevin McCarthy has said that they're going to basically negate all the new hires that they were supposed to hire. They're not going to be able to hire any new people now, so... Yeah, if you're waiting for a tax return that's delayed, there's not going to be any improvement on that. So good luck with that. But over a million Americans could miss out on their share of an estimated $1.5 billion in unclaimed tax refunds, the IRS said here on Thursday. The refunds are for tax year 2019. So if you didn't file for some reason in 2020, you could be owed part of those unclaimed funds. Time is running out for more than a million people to get their tax refunds for 2019, said IRS Commissioner. Many people have overlooked filing a 2019 tax return due to the pandemic. We don't want people to miss their window to receive their refund. By law, taxpayers usually have three years to file their taxes and claim their refund. But if they miss the deadline, that money goes to the U.S. Treasury instead. Usually the deadline falls around April, but the pandemic pus pushed the deadline back to July 15th. The average taxpayer refund that year was $893. But taxpayers who haven't filed could stand to receive $1,000 more because they qualified for the EITC, the Earned Income Tax Credit, that's for low-wage workers. That year, the EITC was designed to help low-income workers was worth as much as $6,557. Uh, you can Google that, uh, EITC, Earned Income Tax Credit, if you want to see if you are eligible for it. I'm sure the IRS website has more information about it. I've talked about that uh, in the past here on our YouTube channel. We encourage people to check their records and acts quickly about this deadline. The IRS has several important ways to check that. Uh, there's also things like the child tax credits and also, you know, lots of other tax credits as well. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything happening here in our country on a daily basis. So if you haven't yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos on our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. And thank you so much for liking and share these videos here. Uh, it really helps out our YouTube channel and anybody that needs to hear this information. Here's some videos you should watch next. There's a red alert right now for millions of Americans. And there's a really big story here going on at Costco that you probably need to hear. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.